All right, time for part B of the addition rule and complements. And actually, it should be the addition rules because last time we talked about the addition rule for disjoint events, but now we're going to talk about the general addition rule for any two events. They do not have to be disjoint, okay? For any two events, the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So let's take a look at our Venn diagram example again. Okay, and here we're letting the event A be defined as an even number. And we'll let B be defined as uh, greater than 10 within this sample space that goes from 1 to 12, once again. Okay, the probability of A or the probability of B. Well, let's see. The probability of A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We already knew that, right? The probability of A is 0 0.500, because half of the numbers from 1 to 12 are even. Now, the probability of B that's only 2 out of the 12, or 1 out of 6, or if we express that as a decimal, 0 0.167. Okay, and so if we add all those up, wait a minute, let's take a look at these as fractions first, because I think it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, the probability of A is 1 half, right? There are 6 even numbers out of 12, that reduces to 1 half. And the probability of a number greater than 10 is 2 out of 12. That reduces to 1 6. So maybe I didn't need to take that 1 half quite as far as I did. Let's keep them under a common, um, common denominator. Oops, here we go. Let me get a bigger eraser. Okay, so instead of 1 half, let's do... 3 sixths, 1 half, 3 sixths, 6 twelfths, all equivalent. If we add those two up, just those two, we would get 3 sixths plus 1 sixth or 4 sixths. So you would expect the probability of A or B to be, if we reduce it, 2 out of 3. And we have 12 numbers here. So we would expect 2 out of every 3 to be either A or B. Let's see if that's 2 out of 3, and we have 12. We would expect 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 4 is 8. We would expect 8 of these numbers to be either A or B. So let's see, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Wait a minute, that's one too many. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yep, we have one too many. Why is that? We wound up with one too many because we counted all of the ones, all of the numbers that were even. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we counted all of the numbers that were greater than 10. So, one, okay, 6, 7, 8. And did you see what happened to the 12? We counted it twice. So look at the general addition rule. It says the probability of A, what's marked in blue here in the Venn diagram, plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And there is only one number that is both even and greater than 10. And that is 1 12th. Okay, so if we convert these 3 sixths to 6 twelfths and 1 sixth to 2 twelfths, we add those two, we subtract the other one. 6 twelfths plus 2 twelfths is 8 twelfths, minus 1 twelfth is 7 twelfths. And if we look inside our sample space. We actually have 1, 2, 3, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers that are either A or B. All right, let's formalize our understanding of complement. All right, if S is the sample space of a probability experiment, and that's in the big purple box, let's let E be an event. We're representing it by a green shape there. And the complement is represented by the orange box, which is around E. It looks like it's E to the Cth power, but it is not. That is just the symbol we're going to use to represent the complement of E, which is all outcomes in the sample space that are not outcomes in the event E. For instance, if we're rolling a six-sided die, if the event E means rolling a five, then the complement of E, which is how we read this, the complement of E is not rolling a 5. The probability of rolling a 5 on a 6-sided die is 1 sixth, or approximately 0 0.167. And the probability of not rolling a 5 is 5 out of 6. And that's a probability of 0 0.833. If we add those up, we get 1. Sorry, it's getting rather late as I'm uh, recording this. And that leads us to the complement rule. If E represents any event, and the complement of E represents, or an E, C there, represents the complement of E, then the probability of the complement of E occurring is equal to 1 minus the probability of E. You could also rewrite that in exactly the opposite fashion. You could write the probability of E equals 1 minus the probability of the complement of E. All right, here we have what I hope is a probability distribution. To prove that it is, I have to add all, all of those probabilities up. And when I do that, I get approximately 1. In fact, I get 1.008495937, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so approximately 1. And we're going to leave it at approximately 1. Okay? So that's just a check to make sure that it is indeed a probability distribution. Okay, to have a probability distribution, you must have all of the probabilities adding up to 1, and there can be no negative probabilities and no probabilities within the distribution greater than one. So no negatives, oops, no negative probs, probabilities, and no probabilities greater than one. In fact, the probability of an event is always going to be greater than or equal to zero, or zero is going to be less than it. And the probability of the event is always going to be less than or equal to one. I don't even know if you can see that one over there very well. Okay? This is a, an impossibility at zero and a certainty at one. Okay, let's talk about how to interpret a probability. To interpret a probability, if 100, whatever, let's say um, college students, you'll fill in the blank with whatever study you're working with, whatever percentage you have, whatever it's a percentage of. So anyways, if 100 college students were randomly selected, we would expect, let's take a look at engineering, we would expect that 0 0.154. Usually, we will express this as a percentage. So 15.4% of them to be engineering majors. And if we looked at the physical sciences, if 100 college students, students, were randomly selected, 
we would expect hmm, only 8.7% of them to be physical science majors. That is a sentence pattern that makes it very easy to communicate what's going on with the probability, probability to interpret it. Okay, so let's look again at the entire chart. And we have engineering, physical sciences, life sciences, all sorts of things here. I don't want to do that. Okay, there we are. All right, so let's take a look. How many of these are STEM fields? Let's see, we have engineering, physical sciences, life science, mathematics, computer science, social science, a little squishy. We're going to leave it out of STEM for right now. And we're going to do one other thing here. We are going to assume that there are no double majors. Of course, we know that's not really the case. There often are. But for the sake of our discussion right now, we're going to consider that there are no double majors in this list. All right, so we need to add up all of those probabilities because if there are no double majors, each of these is disjoint from the other. This is a lot more fun in class with you where we can talk as we're going and you can catch all my mistakes so I don't have to. No. So it keeps things lively. All right, so I'll add it up all together. This is slightly over 50% of the college students who are studying in STEM fields. So going back, all right, 50.8%, remember that. Going back to our language that we used before, okay, if 100 college students were, let me get rid of that, randomly selected, we would expect that Let's see, I was in blue. No, no. Fifty point eight percent of them would be STEM majors. Okay. Now let's do a little bit more work with this. Let me move it back up where it was. And I'm gonna get rid of all that. Okay. Let's look at a few things. Okay, let's look at um, health and professional students. Okay. Not sure professionals and others, not really sure what this is indicating that to be. But anyways, the probability that you randomly choose a professional and other major or a health major, if you're random, randomly selecting college students, is going to be the sum of these two. And I believe that's 0 0.098, where E is professional and other, or health. Okay, so if the probability of professional and health, uh, excuse me, professional and other, or health, being the major of a student, college student you randomly select, that is 9.8% chance that that will occur. All right. So what is the likelihood that it will not occur? Everything else would be the complement of E. So the probability of the complement of E we could add all those up, or since we already did the work down here, we could just say 1.000 minus 0 0.098, and that gives us 0 0.902. So 90.2% of all college majors study something other than professional and other or health. Time flies when you're having fun. We will finish in part C of this video series.